So I got this question a while back from Anand Subramanian, right? And his question is, he has a scatter plot with quadrants, um, four quadrants, like so. Actually, I think I can open this picture, right? Four quadrants, and he wants to be able to do some sort of calculation on this group. You know, the simplest thing being to count them, right? How many orange crosses are there? How many red? How many gray and how many blue? And Anand, if you're listening, uh, this was nine days ago, and I've been working to try and figure out how to go about this, and I think I finally got it. So let me show you what a I got. Okay, so let's make this actually a little bit larger, just so you guys can see kind of how it works. All right, and let's actually put some color, because I love me some color, All right, like so. All right, so here's the idea. Uh, we need to bring the other parameter in as well. Sales limit. Okay, so here we go. I have a scatter plot here of just some random data, and basically I can move these limits, right? So this is the profit limit, which is the horizontal. So let's say if I make that minus 800, right? So you can see all the colors and everything is shifting. Let's say 300, I can make this 2000. Right, and so, and on the left side, it's actually counting by group. So let's say this is group one or quadrant one, two, three, four. Obviously, you can name it whatever you like. The hard part is actually trying to figure out this part, right? This part's easy, okay? This part's hard. So let me walk you through step by step how I went about and did this, right? So I started with a scatter plot, and the scatter plot is really just profit and sales. So let me show you how I did that. So profit, sales, and I think for this one I did customer in the details, right? And just to kind of make it easier, I think I just did something like that, keep only, just that data set right there, okay? All right, so then I did that, and then the next part is to actually figure out these groupings, right? So the way you do it is you have to set two things, which is you have to set this limit, right, or this parameter, and then this limit or parameter, right? And that's these two down here. So let me show you how we did that. So basically, if I edit this, the sales limit is just a floating number, right? And if you don't know what that means, that's okay. It just means a number, right? And I set it to 2000. And obviously, because it's a parameter, right? Um, you can just change it whenever you like. Gives the user the ability to control their analysis. And I did the same thing for um, profit. All right, so just another value. Then what I did was, just to kind of visualize this a little bit easier, just to go into analytics, reference line, and then do a reference line of each. So let's say I'm doing profit, just to pick that profit parameter, so that you can actually see the division of where the colors are changing, you know, where that boundary is. All right, easy. We can all do that. The next part is actually um, grouping these based on the parameter. So you actually have uh, four conditions. This quadrant, which is group one, it is when the sum of sales, right, is greater than this limit, right, so you're going this way, and then the sum of profit is greater than this limit going this way, right, so that's category one or group one. Then you do the next thing. So let's say we do this quadrant, which is group two, then it is any value where the sales are greater than the limit, but in this case it's when the profit is below the limit so you just have to know which one is higher lower higher lower and a good thing to practice is just to write it down on a piece of paper right um, and when you do that you will end up with a formula that looks like this okay so each of these are the groups all right and you can see each of these conditions so group one sum of profit is greater than the profit limit sum of sales is greater than the profit on uh, than the sales limit and so on and so forth Okay, so pretty easy. The problem comes as to how do I actually, oops, how do I actually count this? So if I use it directly, it's not going to work. So let me show you a sheet. If I grab color code in here, okay, and I do the sum, uh, oh, sorry, the count of customers, right? So the unique customers, right? It's 795, but I want to split them up by group, right? So if I bring this into group, I only get one value. Well, why? Because you're not considering it at this um, hierarchy, right? And what I mean by that is these are aggregated values, sum of profit, sum of sales. Whereas when you do it in this one, it's applying it directly to the full data set, 
right? This massive data set. So again, it's like a level of detail problem. So how do you get around that? Well, I just said it, you need to use level of detail calculations. So we need to convert or create this uh, profit fix and sales fix, which basically means it's a, it's an aggregate which considers the customer level of detail. So let's look at fixed, right? So you can see fixed, customer name, and sum of profit. If you visualize this, it's basically, if you think of it as a bar chart, it's each of your customers, right? Individually or uniquely, and then how many, what their profit is for each one. Do it for sales, it's the exact same thing, right? So now that data hierarchy exists, let's just say temporarily through formula. Okay, let's get rid of that. Right, then the next thing you gotta do is, in this color coding formula, instead of using sum of profit, we're gonna replace this with this sales fixed and profit fixed um, level of detail calculation, which I've done over here, like so. So exact same thing. Because this is already an aggregated form, you can get rid of that sum at the beginning, right? But everything else is the same as you can see there. So you can freeze frame that if you want to have a look, right? Then what you get is if you come in here, right? We do the same thing. Oh, actually, sorry, let me go here. Instead of color code, we're going to use this one, right? Using that fix. And if I drop this in, watch what happens, right? There you go. Yeah, because the detail of the customer is actually incorporated into that data set, right? Uh, sorry, into the formula itself, even though it seems like it's invisible. I think this is the hardest thing about level of detail is that you can't physically see what it's doing. It's just something you have to keep in your mind, right? So then, I, you know, I just cleaned it up, made it into a vertical bar chart, put it onto this thing. Now let's test it, right? So let's say I put this on profit limit, which is this one. Let's just make it um, 1,200. Right, so we're way up here, and let's make this 5,500 as a test, because I just want to isolate these, right? So if I look at this now, it should be eight units, right? So group one. Oh, okay, I know what's happened. So here it's saying that there's only eight points, whereas here it's saying it's 82, and that is because we did that little keep only at the beginning, right? So we gotta get rid of that. That was just to simplify my view because I had this full thing. So now if I do that again, I was actually just highlighting here. So if I look at the whole thing, right, it's gonna be hard to really select it, but we should be able to get a ballpark, right? You can see 85 items selected and 82, right? So if we again check something else, maybe we'll check the red one. We should see roughly 601 uh, customers and 601. There you go, so they are matching. Right, so it does take a few steps. Again, Anand, it took me a while to figure this out. I've never done this before. So I hope you enjoy, I hope you get to see this video and I will see you guys next time. If you wanna learn more about Tableau, check the link in the description. See ya.